Hey guys, welcome to the Pixels Get Me podcast. We're talking episode four today. Uh, we have a couple guests for the roundtable. Uh, this is a podcast where we kind of go over uh, just the weekly news for gaming, for tech, and uh, other stuff that kind of interests us as a, as a community. Um, for, for myself, uh, I'm over at uh, Mixer.com. I'm a streamer, content creator over there. Uh, I'm also a, uh, a moderator for the Breach Alpha. And also um, looking at doing some other stuff with uh, some future developments that we're not going to talk about just yet. But uh, but mo- mainly I'm over on, on Mixer and we're starting this podcast as well as another alternative outreach to kind of uh, get out there, meet some of the Mixer community especially, um, and get some, get some friends to appear on the podcast. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Moral Truth. Uh, he's a streamer over at Mixer. Uh, Moral, you online? Can you uh, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, hello, everybody. I am uh, Moral Truth. I am like what Pixel said. I'm also uh, a streamer on Mixer. I'm also part of um, the Breath of Variety um, stream team, right? That's that correct? That's correct. Yeah, and um, yeah, for me, like I stream um, a variety of. Um, retro slash indie games or pretty much any game you know from the past um, some games I've played um, recently was uh, actually you know coincidentally um, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and um, I've also got into um, I got back into um, old school RuneScape but you know it's a uh, on a private server cool you know, cool yeah 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 um, a while back I think about maybe like a month ago or so I've done um i did like a like a month or two i I did like a pokemon silver randomizer nuzlocke which i completed so it was it was pretty cool too i I do like a variety of stuff you know whatever i'm feeling and have you uh um, have you played all the pokemon games or just some of them uh i haven't played all of them yet um the very first one i played was silver i played it on the sp like on the game boy and then um you know i got back into it like you know, earlier this year, but you know, I did you know as a as a nuzlocke, so as a randomizer nuzlocke. So I'll get like random starters. I'll face against um, random teams and all that. But cool. yeah, yeah. I, I I love Gen two. Yeah. Yeah, it's a unique. Uh, that's a unique way of playing it. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not a, not a huge huge Pokemon guy, but that's it's cool to see a different way to to play it as well. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, like more of a challenge. You know, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, um, besides that, I pretty much stream like once a week on Mondays, but I might stream randomly other days. But besides Mixer, I have I also host my own podcast as well called uh, Morals Podcast. Well, basically, I it's an open platform where um, creators and the like, you know, they share, you know, what's on their mind. So, like, I, I leave the mic up to them, you know, they talk what they want to talk about. And, you know, I, you know, let's follow up on, you know, what they want to talk about pretty much um and i do that like on youtube itunes etc and on youtube i also do a little bit of of asmr too oh awesome man cool so yeah, asmr and- uh we can we can talk we can talk a little bit about asmr another time that's something i'd like to uh so one of the one of the three parts that we talk gaming tech and then we talk new media and ASMR, I think, is kind of like one of those emerging new media things. So it'd be cool to kind of have you back. Maybe I don't know if you know someone else that's in ASMR who's doing some stuff that maybe you you have within your network. We could have a couple people come talk ASMR because I think that'd be interesting just to kind of show uh, what it is without someone just kind of walking into it and being like, "What did I just walk into?" You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. They have like one person or two in mind, but and I'll I'll see if I can reach out to um, other folks within the ASMR community and see if they want to um, hop on your podcast for sure, man. Sweet, dude, I appreciate it. Um, also, so th- thanks for the intro, Moral. Appreciate it. Uh, Curbs, we also have Curbs, the the longtime follower of the Pixels Get Me channel, the current king of chat. Curbs, are you online? Do we got you? I don't know who that is, but my name is Emonster808. I play Black Desert and Black Desert. All right, so so Curbs is standing in for Emonster this week because Emonster is out at Hawaii and he had a little bit of connectivity issues. Uh, it wasn't the best audio uh, situation, so uh, he has deferred to Curbs to uh, to hold his position 
Um, I guess Curbs is going to be Emon then. Emon, if you're in chat, did I do your intro right? <laughs> Who is that? Emon Musk? No, Emon. E <laughs> <laughs> yeah, e, e, e Monster Musk. Yeah, E Monster Musk. Man, he's got a new name now. No, E Monster 808's uh, another streamer here on Mixer, a, a follower of the community for a while now. Uh, he caught me one day when I was playing Path of Exile and totally schooled me. So ever since then, he's uh, he's been a help, kind of bringing us into other games that we have no idea about. Um, and he's he's a good mentor in that space for sure. Um, all right, cool. Any anything else, Curves? <laughs> uh, no, I'm Emon. All right, anything else, Emon Curves? Yes. All right, what what are you up to, uh, man? What are you playing? Uh, well, besides upgrading to the 1070 Ti, Ooh, I mainly wanted to ask because you said you completed it, but how did the Nuzlocke actually go for you? Like smooth or like? grueling um like at first you know like i've started like try to get used to like how it is where basically you know i have to catch one pokemon per area like the first encounter and then you know if my pokemon dies i can't use it anymore so it was rough during like a few few times i think it was like a couple of runs where i failed the run and then you know the third time you know i was actually able to complete it Cool, man. Um, yeah, it was silver version, so you know I had to go to Johto, or, you know, face the the, the Elite Four, mm -hmm. and I did a poll to see like if viewers wanted me to um, go through Kanto and then you know battle the Kanto gym leaders like on silver version and then you know battle Red, you know that's like you know if I beat Red, you know boom I completed the Nuzlocke and you know I happened to do that, so you know I had to do a bit of grinding there, so. Yeah, I did like a bunch of grinding, and then I had like my Pokemon around like 65, roughly around the 60s, and then you know I was able to beat it. Nice. And then did you find yourself doing like uh, grinding more like off stream, or were you, were you kind of stream grinding as well, or just doing objectives with the chat, like voting and stuff? Um, there was like one point where I um, did some grinding off stream. But you know, for the most part, you know, like the gameplay and all that stuff, um, I just did it on the stream. But you know, I started another run, but I'm not streaming it. No, at this time, just something I'm doing on the side. It's a crystal random fuser nuzlocke. Well, it's very similar to silver, but you know, except it was like two Pokemon fused together, and then boom, that's your Pokemon. So you could have, for example, like a Chikorita Ghastly fuse. And then, so you would have like a, a grass ghost type and you would share the move sets, you would share the learn sets and you know, all that stuff. And yeah, even the name gets fused too. So yeah, that run, like that, that one is much rougher because you know, there's a thing called um, crazy difficulty where, you know, the Johto trainers Pokemon are 20% stronger and then the Kanto um, trainers um, Pokemon are fifty percent stronger, so that that one was like more rough, because I mean in the the Elite Four, you know, like instead of the cap with Lance, you know, being level fifty, you know, it was level sixty, and his strongest Pokemon was like a Celebi Wobbuffet Fit Fuse, and I had I thought I was gonna have trouble with that one for, for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I'm currently like in that run. I'm currently in Kanto. I have like one more. Um, gym leader, I have to battle um, blue, and then I have to go to red, but um, yeah, his um, blue's team is going to be like, roughly like, with the 50% thing, is, I think it's like 81 to 87 like in that range and then, and then Ash um, red, I think his Pokemon might be in the 90s, or in, uh, maxed out, like level 100 so, that's going to be low. yeah, I, like, I have like a box Filled with dead Pokemon already that I lost in the, the, the entire <laughs> run. Seriously. Corpse carrying. <laughs> yeah, I had to keep grinding only for those Pokemon to die. I'm like, oh, crud. Oh, man. Yeah, man. It's the struggle. The struggle's real, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Th th that's like, cool that you're, that you're playing it different, you know, like finding the other challenge within the game. That's awesome. Yeah, my team is not even level 70 yet, so... This is, I mean, I'm getting there, you know. I got, I'm trying to make sure my team's at least maybe 75, roughly, if I want to battle blue. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's let's uh, 
move into the news for the week. You guys are cool with that? Yeah, sure. All right, so uh, so so one of the articles we have, uh, we're talking about the Kingdom Hearts three launch. Uh, Xbox, of course, is getting a piece of it. Um, I think Xbox might even be getting the entire uh, story so far. I don't know if you guys saw that too. Basically, it's I have not. so story so far is all nine games in one to kind of get people caught up for the launch of Kingdom Hearts three. I'm pretty sure that's coming to uh, to Xbox as well. Um, but I know for sure it's coming to PS4, so that's pretty cool to kind of get everyone on the same page, play all nine games in a binge, and get completely confused by the Kingdom Hearts storyline. But uh, but yeah, good stuff. Um, this controller, as we can see, for those who are not on the podcast with us on stream or watching this on YouTube, you cannot see this beautiful creation that is the Kingdom Hearts Xbox One controller. Um, but it's pretty sweet looking. Uh, I'm definitely gonna pick one up. I think just for uh, for having it as like my PC controller. Um, what do you guys think? Do you guys like the design? Are you excited about Kingdom Hearts three? What are your thoughts? Um, I think the controller. I think it's not bad of a design. I kind of maybe expected something better, but I don't know. But I mean, I'm st I'm still gonna stick with my Xbox 360 controller for my PC. I mean, that's what I'm using to play uh, Kingdom Hearts Burst by Sleep. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, Curbs? I think it's all right looking. I'm probably not gonna shell out the thirty-five for it. Um, Is it thirty-five? Yeah. It's uh, gonna be more scroll, than thirty-five. No, scroll up. Uh, right there, thirty-four ninety-nine. Yeah, because Ow. it's because it's wired. I yep. mean, it's not bad. I mean, I paid roughly like thirty bucks when when I got like the three hundred and sixty controller off of Amazon yeah. like five years ago. Yeah, it's yeah. not a bad price. It's the you know, it's not good enough to really want me want to shell out the shell out the dash for it. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty excited about the game, so I, I I'm I'm excited about the random accessories that yeah. have the game branding on it. You know. Yeah, I don't have a I'm, console, so I'm not even gonna get to play this. But <laughs> game wise, yeah. I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I was real disappointed. I think it was E3 both years they put the trailer out. The first one, the trailer wasn't done, which yep. is fine. Yeah. And, you know, they said that. And then they brought it back, the same exact trailer, still nowhere near done. And I'm like, yeah, we still don't what? have a release date. Yeah. What, what was the point in bringing that? Like, there was very little difference in what was actually done in that trailer. Well, uh, you know. Yeah, that's that's right, one then. that's one of the it's seriously one of the biggest games that they've talked about where you know, what are you bringing to E3 that's actually a product? You know, like that's not a trailer, that's not a um a music with word teaser at the end. Like they were doing that for like so many years and then <laughs> seeing like the double iteration of Kingdom Hearts 3 coming soon, coming soon with no dates anytime ever. You know, people were people were raging. I mean, people waited a long time for number three, so yep. um, it's hard. And then and then like changing it from, hey, it's not quite Kingdom Hearts three. We're actually doing this point two thing, two point eight thing. Uh, you know, just stay with us. <laughs> it's like everyone's like, where is three? You know, like this point whatever point seven five. No, I want I want three. You know, <laughs> right. so. But yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of emotions for the uh for the people that are going to be playing this i think and, and getting into it uh but yeah we're looking at january 29th for us japan's going to get a little bit early all right uh any, anything else can we move on to the next xbox news sure go cool. for it all right so next uh next xbox news last week we covered a little bit with google stream uh there was actually a couple streamers streaming with google stream doing the streamception uh, I wasn't able to get into the beta invite on this, but basically streaming uh, games through Google Chrome is what the uh, the other one was. This is streaming games straight to your Xbox. No download, no load time, you know, 60 frames per second. Uh, the, te the technology's there now. Um, you can play it, you know, on on any device that, that Microsoft will support. So if Microsoft still had a phone, for instance, they could be like, hey stream to this Microsoft phone and you can play Halo. You know, like that's kinda like the killer app where they could go straight up against Fortnite, for instance, like before the 
before the podcast started, we were joking about commercials and about Samsung and the Fortnite commercial and all that. Um, but yeah, like this could stream, you know, Microsoft games to any device, and it's called Project X Cloud. I'm not gonna play the trailer, but uh, but what are you guys' thoughts on this? You guys care at all about this? I think it's a cool idea, and that it'd be really nice to have in place. The main thing I want to point out is in the uh, this article. I guess they made a statement of saying that I they want to bring console quality games to PC. Yeah. And I kind of just had to laugh at that. Yeah. Because, because because PC is ahead in every <laughs> in every direction in every way yeah. and will always yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. It's still no. the master race, I suppose. So. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> No, but, yeah, I think it's cool though. I think it's worth having. It'd be nice not to have to do the download and whatnot. So, yeah, the uh, it's not just the console quality to PC that's the issue. It's console quality to mobile devices, and also mm-hmm. just the console games themselves to a PC, which you can do <laughs> illegally. But this makes it so you can do it. For real, you know, like. But we don't want to talk about illegally, do we? Just <laughs> no, we're not going to talk small. about illegally. <laughs> We don't want to go down that stuff. <laughs> oh, so you remember when you guys downloaded? No. No, we we have moral truth with us today, so we're definitely not talking about any of that. Well, yeah, if we talk about it, he'll <laughs> spill the beans. He's, he morally has to. Yes, he he will bring the moral truth, and we we need to we need to keep him keep him reined in. All right, so let's. Uh, Somebody else has to. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's move into uh, into Sony's news. Uh, we have a couple articles for uh, for Sony. One is um, a Sony CEO coming out saying that the next generation PlayStation is necessary. So basically confirmed PlayStation 5. Uh, they don't say if it's actually going to be called PlayStation 5, but we'll call it that until they come up with a better name. Um, but like, like PlayStation V or something? Yeah, who knows, right? PSV? That sounds that sounds good. It sounds a little bit like a Vita though, so they might want to get away from that branding. Mm, but uh, probably. But yeah, it looks like it'll be end or after 2021. So uh, that would mean that we would see some sort of announcement for games next year that are coming to the next next generation of hardware. Some sort of technical tests or whatever. You know where they do those technical trailers where everyone's like, "Oh my God, look at those particle effects. This is crazy." You know, and then and then. Uh, and then they say, "Oh yeah, the hardware's coming in a couple years." So like that sort of thing is what I'm expecting. Yeah, and they're like, "But yeah, all the hardware that you know showing all the awesome things you just saw, yeah, that's all done by PC. Those that's not the console." Right. So. Like I even thought that when PlayStation VR was was first uh, conceived, they they <laughs> wouldn't show. <laughs> they refused to show the hardware that was powering it. And I'm like, oh, they're just running PCs underneath these these cabinets, you know? And they're putting on PSVR people for the E3 show. And, yeah, it's a PC running that because a PlayStation can't run, you know, 90 frames per second VR to uh, to keep people from getting motion sick. But uh, it ended up being actual PlayStation hardware probably pushing it. But I mean, for the most part, most people or most companies bring consoles to show off their games at those just to give the best experience to people and increase their sales so yeah yeah but in terms of actual the ps5 i mean if they uh, cool i guess yeah, I've owned all the PlayStations. I don't know about you guys, but I've always I've always had a PlayStation connected to my TV ever since I had the money to buy the first PlayStation. You know, doing the summer job as like a 14-year-old kid, you know. So, mm-hmm. PlayStation has always had a place in my in my home, you know. So, I I, I assume I'm going to get one. I'm I'm not going to just blanket say, "Yeah, I'm going to get one because I'm a fanboy." That's not what I'm saying. But I'm assuming that there's going to be some sort of reason why they're going to be able to get me to get one again. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, PS4 is still a solid piece of hardware. PS4 Pro, we don't have one of those yet. Um, and that's that's also a solid piece of hardware. So, um, yeah, we got time still for sure. Yeah, I missed the screen, you know, when you turn on your PS2. Uh, I missed that screen. That was pretty. That was, that was I know, right? Back. Yeah, like, and they, they won awards 
just like on the innovation side with like the uh, the PSP, the X Cross media in, uh, interface with you know sliding up and down. It was running laps around Xbox back in the day. You know, like everyone was so the clunky Xbox menu that would like crash as you're trying to do anything more complicated or whatever. Um, PlayStation's always kind of had an edge. Finally, the Xbox One X has an edge hardware wise when we're talking like teraflops and all that, but um PlayStation Sony's always done more on the innovation side, I think. So that's good. Um uh, go ahead. Bot says I reached the rank of Atari twenty six hundred. I don't know what that yeah, means. That means you're you means you've been hanging out in the channel long enough to be not a noob. So thanks dude. <laughs> Anytime you you have my moral support. Oh awesome. I appreciate it. Um let's move on to the next uh PlayStation article. Um, so it looks like for the first time, um, since the PlayStation Network online ID, uh, existed, this is the first time we're going to be able to change our PSN ID, which I am excited about, which is why I put this article in my podcast (laughs) because like, uh, I've renamed my guy a couple times, but I still have like that main source name. You can rename your name, but not like the actual account. You can change, uh, you can change your email, but you can't change your account name. Um, so weird that these things are features 12 years later or whatever. Um, they could have made a lot of money because it looks like they're going to give the first one for free. And then after that, we're going to spend $10 for a normal person or $5 for a PlayStation Plus member to do the Switch. So, um, so that's cool. Uh, it looks like it's going to be happening sometime uh, in the beginning of next year with a couple beta people getting rolled into like a November able to change their name type deal and testing it out. So by no means is it huge news, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. You guys got anything on it? Um, not really. I mean, I made a PSN just because I don't have a PlayStation or, or, or have access to the PlayStation network gotcha. or anything like that. I just, made it just have it i don't know <laughs> no no i get it you claim your name you know i didn't actually claim my name as it was taken so i had to, I had to take another name oh, or no. that one or that or they didn't want me to have moral in the name for some reason i know uh-huh. some sites won't let me have moral in the name uh-huh interesting what do you think curves um for the most part i feel like they're doing this i mean sure people are probably outreaching about it you know trying to get their id changed if they you know, they go buy something else now or whatever. But I feel like it's mostly for the people who made their name something stupid or to troll when they initially got it, like, several years ago. Like when they and were 12? they no longer go by, like, <laughs> XX Bot Muncher 69 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, pretty and much. now they're looking to change their name. Yeah, that's good. It's good stuff. And that's about all I got on it. That's just, I, I feel like that's why. Well, thanks for the... Yeah, input. yeah. that way people don't feel so bad that, oh, you're stuck with a dumb name. I mean, you can finally change it. I mean, after years of, you know, after... I mean, Xbox had d- done it, you know, a while, like a long time ago. But, you know, they, they charge people, you know, to change the name. So, mm-hmm. easier that, you pay for that or, you know, gotta make a new account. And that's pretty much what I did. Yeah, people even make I, new even, accounts. <laughs> even though I don't even have an Xbox or whatever, you know, I just made an account. Because why not? Yep. Yeah. It's like, uh grandchild goes up to his grandfather's like why do the people you're playing games with call you xx bud muncher 69 <laughs> well it's because i made that name when i was 12 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and they I, still call me that today when that was the the extent of my humor putting putting <laughs> foul words and numbers together you know that were unique and and meant a lot to my 12 year old mentality you know it's like oh my gosh you should also be proud of me, Pixels. I censored myself. I could have gone way worse. Yeah, you could have. You did great, man. But still, like, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> you could have been the Legend 69 or something. I don't know. Yeah, you could have. All right, let's move on to the next uh, next article. It's still in, in console uh, news. Uh, we're talking about the Nintendo Switch uh, online. Uh, last week we talked, I'm pretty sure we talked about the Nintendo Switch online games. Maybe that was an episode two. I don't know. Where if you spend the money for Nintendo Switch Online, which is you know pretty decent, I think it was thirty five dollars for a family account. Uh, so it's like up to seven accounts with online access, um, or twenty dollars for one. 
I think. Is that right, Kerbs? Is that a, is that uh, a subscription? Or, yeah, or is that like a flat yeah. fee? It's a subscription. Awesome. It's like Xbox Live for the Switch. Yeah, oh, it's gotcha. 20 for solo for a year, but I also believe they do less for smaller periods of time. Yeah, like four dollars uh, a think, month or something. Three dollars yeah, a month. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they. I don't think they limit you to just the twenty dollars upfront per year. Right. So. so, so they had these twenty games that came out. You know, typical old school games. Like I, I spent uh, several hours playing Excite Bike because that's like a throwback for me. Um, but they ended up coming out with four new games this past week. So they have the NES Open Tournament Golf. They have Solomon's Key, Super Dodgeball. And then they released another version of Legend of Zelda. Uh, they had the original Legend of Zelda on that first 2020 launch. But this one is the special edition of Legend of Zelda. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting. So the games were really hard back then. And I think that's what th spawns this. Because kids nowadays, I don't know if they realize how hard those games were and how easy games are now. <laughs> <laughs> and how much like they help you and tutorialize everything and tell you uh but on zelda you log in or you you create a game and you're in a map and there's a, a room in in the wall you know like that's it and then it's like hey it's dangerous take this you know like like that's all you get like that's your tutorial all right go go stab things you know go wander around and get lost this Sounds this like runescape <laughs> yeah exactly right like again this is runescape is is old school man like old school in the same way the new runescape i think had like tons of tutorials old runescape like good luck <laughs> yeah the, the, yeah the new runescape is runescape 3 then the other yeah. one is called old school runescape yeah but the new and, runescape and then there's people that and then there's people with private servers runescape private servers right so. and then the new yeah. runescape i mean it is it is almost like following a, a tutorial quest line all the way through you know old school runescape is like hey here's here's your items good luck you know like off you go right so so they're calling this like the souped up version of legend legend of zelda so you start with uh, a ton of rupees a ton of extra items you get uh the better version of the sword i think the magical shield the blue ring and the power bracelet so basically like i don't know the equivalent of beating half the game starting at level zero like you load the game and you've, it's like you've already beaten half the game um, and then there's this other this other part to it, saying if you beat the game, you get access to a more difficult version called Second Quest, which that sounds interesting to me, like beating the hard mode of a hard game already. I mean, I guess Zelda's mm -hmm. not that hard, but like way to way to do it up, you know, like way to re revisit it. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm pretty excited about this. I think I'm gonna spin it up and start messing around with it because I'm I'm really curious about the second quest, and seeing uh and seeing how difficult this is. Like, see if if I'm even able to to slay Ganon. I know the Switch does a lot of the free state stuff, and I would try not to do that too much. Trying to uh to save yourself, they give you that little like like the like the ROMs do, where you can pause the game and and save the state, and then you can kind of reload that jump until you get it right or whatever. But anyway, so what do you guys think about this? Um, I think games definitely, at least the early Legend of Zeldas, were rather difficult. And I think it's cool that they're giving me items. But if I have to listen to, hey, listen, hey, listen, a million times, hey, I'm not, no, <laughs> no, you stop that. I, I forgot to mention I'm also a, a side voice actor too. Oh, so. nice, dude. That's cool. Yeah. If I have to listen to that <laughs> stupid fairy, Perry, if I cannot mute him, I am not playing it. Listen. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, what do you think, Moral? Do you got a Switch by any chance? Just, just curious. We didn't cover that earlier. Are you playing Switch at all? Nope, just PC, man. Okay, just okay, PC. cool. All right, so uh, so yeah, let's let's move on to the next thing. Uh, this is this is PC related. Um, so I yeah, I know, right? We had so much console news. I don't even know why that was uh, that was in there. Um, but yeah, so yeah, why is it Pixel? Tell us. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I'm trying to uh, 
I'm trying to broaden my horizons too. You know, like I want to I want to learn stuff about everything else that's going on. So it kind of forces me to to keep my ear to the ground. Um, I feel you, man. I feel you. So uh, so one of the things uh, that happened last year was uh, World of Warcraft. The title was leaked um, by Blizzard store merchandise that I ended up pulling down. Um, and then they're like, oh, our bad. Yeah, we kind of let, let loose the title of the game. We're not going to confirm it, right? So this time, they were putting up a ton of Diablo gear. I got really excited because I was following the Diablo uh, account on Twitter. And they were like, hey, check out the new gear store. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, if they're putting stuff in the gear store, that means you're making new logos for new games, right? But there's no, like, new logos for new games. What they ended up doing was they ended up reusing a lot of the old, uh, and it, on the, on the page that we're looking at, if you can see it on stream or on, uh, on YouTube, um, they're not showing those items. There's several more beyond this. Um, but a lot of the Dark Wanderer, which is from Diablo 2. So I'm like, oh man, all this Diablo, you got a Diablo 2 hoodie, you got like a Diablo 2, uh, poster or keychain or whatever and i was like man this is cool they're gonna do diablo 2 remaster you know they're really putting the logo out everywhere um but then this leaked where uh they're calling everything diablo reign of terror diablo reign of terror shirt diablo reign of terror poster um so everyone's like what is diablo reign of terror is it an expansion is it a new game is it you know what is it so so everyone's thinking that this is the new name but no, we have no confirmation. I think the update on the article, uh, it said these are names and copy used for some of the new products available at BlizzCon this year and are not direct references to content at the show, is what a Blizzard rep told uh, GameSpot. But um, but yeah, so interesting. I'm, I'm excited for Diablo. Um, what are you guys thinking? Um, assuming that Diablo ran a terror... Is actually a name related to a game or DLC or update or whatever. That'd be cool, but I don't know. I feel like they may just be looking too much into it. I know, right? Everyone's looking at everything. Diablo 4 confirmed. Um, yeah. Yeah. What do you think, um, Marl? You play any Diablo? No, I have not. Um, other Blizzard games I have played in the past were um, Hearthstone and um, Overwatch. Okay, cool, but, cool. Yeah, I, I stopped playing both of those um, for, I don't know why, I just happened to stop playing those. I, got, I guess I got interested in other games, but yeah, I haven't played um, any Diablo or World of Warcraft, but you know, like I said, you know, I, I played RuneScape as a kid, you know, growing up. Right. And, uh, you know, now I'm, you know, I'm on a on private server as we speak, you know, and as, I don't have to like spend like like i don't know months just to get like 99 on the skill it'll take me like like an hour or two just to get like 99 on, on combat skills and whatnot understood you know? yeah that way you just go straight to you know even when you go just straight to the slayer or the bossing or whatnot you know yeah. you don't have to spend weeks just trying to get the, the stats for it <laughs> yeah remove some of the grind especially if you've done it before you know like no thanks i just want to build a character and, and defeat everything yeah yeah there. Yeah, the rates, the XP rates, you know, they're fixed, you know, based on if you're playing, you know, as a regular player or you want to go into Iron Man, you know, there's like, what, five, six different kinds of Iron Man uh, modes in, in Rune Yeah, they, they, they only make it harder, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like, yeah, you know how you lost 12 years of your life? This is how you lose 30 years of your life. Iron Man 6. It's like, whoa, what? <laughs> Yeah, it sounds uh, like what, like hardcore Iron Man or something like that. And then yeah, you yeah. die, then you just become a regular Iron Man. Yeah. So you can't die. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, uh, so Diablo is definitely something. I, we started the channel on Diablo. Um, we'll probably when Diablo comes out on Switch uh, November second with BlizzCon and all that, uh, we'll probably be playing Diablo on Switch on stream, uh, doing some of that. Uh, and then we'll see what what they announce because they're going to announce something. They got two spots on the main stage this year for BlizzCon. Uh, Diablo's n never had two spots on the main stage, like in years. So they're going to say something. It's going to be awesome, hopefully, and hopefully Curbs likes it. Skepticism. <laughs> He's I a, don't, a resident I skeptic. I trust nothing. 
Understood, man. Understood. Yeah, his name is Elon. His name is Iman. Iman Hume now. Iman. Iman yeah. Curbs. Iman Curbs yeah. Musk. No, Iman Hume. <laughs> even even <laughs> never heard of David Hume. He's a skeptic. No, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Like All right. If they put out something cool, that would be great. But if they do just a silly what's next panel and ask the devs where it goes nowhere like it usually does, oh. but it's just on the main stage. It's not a panel, dude. It's an announcement. They'll have panels. Enough. They'll have the panels announcer. too. <laughs> They'll have panels too, but they're not gonna be be wasting, you know, main stage time for Q and A. You no. never know. They might just be doing that to troll you. They have done weirder things. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not. It's not impossible. Skeptic. Skeptic. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the final article. Cool guys. All right. All right. Okay. So we're not we're not able to talk about new media. We didn't have anything too good to mention except for that Seven Deadly Sins season two is coming out this week, this next week. So watch that. But we've already talked about that previously. So let's not. Um, let's talk about the six worst gaming trends of this generation. This is a an article that uh, that Iman shared with us. Uh, You're o- welcome. <laughs> October 10 from uh, CulturedVentures.com. Um, so, so pretty cool little, uh, write up. I don't want to go like too crazy. So I'm just going to, because Fortnite is one of them. No, Fortnite isn't one of them. (laughs) I mean, they, they could have said the seventh one would be battle Royale, but they didn't because it's not, it's not fully a trend yet. Like, so, so one of the things uh, I'm going to go, I disagree, but all right. Right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, in, in a year, it will be a trend once all the AAA studios have a VR out. But meanwhile, everyone just kind of came up with them, and it's evolved since you know H one Z one. But um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go through the six, and then I'll let you guys pick which ones you wanna just like round table. Cool. So all six. all six. So six trends. One is loot boxes. Wow, sensitive subject, I think. Two, expensive... Yeah, I watching the box there. <laughs> <laughs> Two, uh, expensive season passes without any info at all. Like, basically selling a season pass before the game even launches, before anyone's even touched it. Okay. Uh, a, a, another one that kind of goes right with it. Number three is announcing DLC before the game even comes out. Um, the fourth one is holding button to interact. Which uh, is kind of annoying. And then uh, the fifth one is goodbye physical releases. With a nice picture of a giant hard drive. <laughs> and then uh, and then six, microtransactions in single player games. Alright guys, so which uh, I'm going to let Moral pick one first. What do you want to talk about, dude? You can go in order, I don't mind. Alright, we'll go loot boxes. Tell me about loot boxes, man. You played, you, Overwatch. Lo- you played yeah, Overwatch. You played Overwatch. I know. I, so, I, know so, I played Overwatch. So, I know, I so know. let's uh, let's let's get into how much money you spent on loot boxes, if you don't mind. I actually don't. Actually, Ooh, I don't either. All right, how about curbs? Actually, in Hearthstone is another. <laughs> it's not. It's not like a loot box, but you know, you have to buy packs and you open it or whatever. It's completely Sometimes different, I... man. That's completely different. Oh. Yeah. I think I think buying card packs is a thing that will always be a thing. Well, loot it's boxes. If it feels a little bit more pay to play, but no, loot boxes are more like cosmetic purposes. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's different. But uh-huh. uh, but you also, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's different. Like the 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 gambling side is there. You know, you spend you spend money and you don't know what you're gonna get. You know, right. I mean, right now loot boxes are illegal in some countries. Like. For instance, Blizzard is not allowed to sell loot boxes in Belgium right now because the Belgian government was like, that's gambling. No, you can't do that. You have to have a license to do that. So so there is definitely kickback, especially over the last year. I mean, this has been this has been a a sensitive subject for a lot of people. What do you think of Curbs? Um, I'm thinking, at least in the terms of Overwatch, to looking at this picture, I've not spent any money on loot boxes, and I have... Um, a couple legendary skins for each class, so that's not gotcha. really. But um. Mm. And what's your what's your level on Overwatch, dude? If you don't mind me asking. Uh. Last time I checked, it was over a hundred. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah, mine was at least over a hundred too, I believe. Yeah, right. I don't remember exactly, but it was over a hundred. Yeah, mine is not uh, like five hundred or six hundred or whatever it was. Right. Because you can play a lot. You get. Of it. Yeah, you get ones. You get them by levels. You get them by the events. What is it? The events. The and dailies. There's the arcade dailies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah this is arcade. Plenty. Yeah. Yeah, you get mm. plenty of them. 
I think loot boxes are fine as long as you have ways to get them other than paying for them. Right. And the game has a variety of things you can get through custom and customization you can get overall and items you can get overall by actually playing and not just locking things behind a paywall because that goes that's a paywall plus the potential for not to get anything period and that's that's a bit much but right. otherwise all right cool i'm good on loot boxes you guys good yeah, not really much to say about it, you know. I mean, people would buy it, you know, eventually, you know, they want it to look cool in-game, but, you know, it's not really um, necessary. I mean, you, you get loot boxes anyway by leveling up and by doing arcade, yeah. but not really any point of buying it, to yeah. be honest. I'm a cheap, cheap person, broke as anything, so I, I play as little as possible, and I have no issues getting stuff, at least in most of the games with loot boxes that I play. So we've we've talked about this previously, just on stream curbs. But like mm -hmm. supporting games, supporting developers. Um, the tricky thing on on loot boxes, like Overwatch, is a premium title with a premium price. You know, and Star Wars Battlefront that got or Battlefront Two rather that got um, uh, completely completely destroyed because of loot boxes basically creating a paywall in content of grinds of hours or hundreds of dollars before you can unlock certain characters. What do you think about a free game instituting loot boxes to support the game? Um, okay. When we say free game, putting loot free boxes to play. in. Yeah. Okay. Are we talking, you know, everything can be grinded for and gotten like, no, POE let's say let's like say it's a, all let's say it's all cosmetics that come out, out of the loot boxes. Doesn't affect anything. All cosmetics. Just gives you cosmetics to look a little different because you supported the game. Do you have the ability to change your cosmetic anything besides from what comes in the boxes, or all cosmetic changes are primarily from the boxes? In this scenario. I would say almost all. 99% of the cosmetics, except for maybe like annual logins and stuff like that, would come from loot boxes. Um, I probably wouldn't play it, primarily just because, <laughs> I mean, I, I play games to their fullest extent, and then end game is fashion, plus whatever mix is fashion, something rather, like fashion flame, yeah. frame, From fashion frame. wars, that type, yeah, gotcha. fashion wars, guild wars, you know, fashion, yep. destiny, fashion, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so probably not, because that just makes it boring, but I think it's okay overall for a free game to do a loot box thing to gain revenue, because if, especially if they're a smaller company, because it, it helps them grow, but if it's that much of a gap for customization, then I probably wouldn't play it. I wouldn't be angry, but I wouldn't play it. All right, cool. Anything else, uh, Moral? Um, like if it's a free game and they want to imp implement loot boxes, I mean, I mean, I don't really see anything wrong with that. I mean, it depends on, like on how they approach it. If it's like, like it's like you play a game, like every round of the game is like, oh, don't forget you can buy loot boxes. Like if they like keep throwing that in your face, pop up then, ads. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> yeah, that would, yeah, that'd be annoying. The ones where you're like, you can accidentally even click to buy and then you're like oh really it's loading the buy yeah, page now like, i'm gonna yeah, close really paypal right now to, to get that yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. gotcha the invasive as as throw in my face then, then, yeah, yeah the invasive selling no thanks yeah that's what i mean all right curbs what one you want to talk about man mm, well we can go we can continue going down on the list because the one i mainly have a problem with is next so. all right cool all right, so expensive season passes without any info. Talk to me. How you feel? Hate it. Disgusting. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Give me an you example. You should not. You pay. <laughs> okay. Well, look at the pictures. The first one, the the one on the right is Destiny Two. They put out a season pass that is going to cost you twenty dollars for something they give you literally no information for, and it's for a game that has continuously disappointed people in the content that they've been given for their hard-earned money. They're expecting you to pay more and more. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> I've already paid you for the game. 
I am not going to pay you for something I don't know what it is. You could give me sh box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for my $20. And it's like, well, thanks for that, I guess. No. All right. No. Wow. <laughs> Curbs. Because you can royally <laughs> screw people over. Curbs, I'm, I'm going to have... no reason. I'm going to have to bleep you now, man. You know, you yeah? just lost it, right? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> he's in rap mode now? He's, he's going down dark path. Yeah? No, I, I'm... You know I, what, I, Dude, pixels? I'm with you. I'm with you, man. Hey, you know what, Pixels? Oh, my gosh. I probably deserve it. Yes, you do deserve it. <laughs> I wonder what the viewers think about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. I am the king of chat, so their opinion do not matter. Oh my gosh. All right. So, uh, so what what do you think, Immoral? Uh, wait a second. Uh, Nazi DLCs before the game comes out. Like, why though? Oh, you're like, jumping to the next one? Or are you talking no, season no, passes? Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah, he's, oh, he's talking season, season passes still, so... Oh, season passes, oh, my bad. Uh, I was a little bit multitasking there. Oh, you can, you can jump down if you want, man. Oh, no, 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 I'm good. Yeah, I'll do the expensive season passes without any info. Like, why would why would you do that? Like, seriously, like... To get money, you can't man. You <laughs> can't just expect people to know, like, what the season pass does. Like, unless, of yeah, but... course, they might think, like, oh, but, like, for example... Um, let's say, like, Fortnite, for example. Oh, season... 624 or whatever mm -hmm. and you already kind of have the expectation of what the season passes for but you know if it's like a new game like i mean you can't yep. really base the assumption based on like a on a previous game but yeah you gotta have that information there like if you don't have the information like why can i expect people to buy something to have no like knowledge or information about like that just doesn't make any sense yeah what about I know, like i, <laughs> I don't just want your money but like seriously what about if they get it better? What about if they give you like one, like for instance, maybe in Destiny, they give you one exclusive weapon if you're a season pass holder? No, but that's it's that's like... how they do it, right? No. If they maybe. give you like the if they give you if they get you like the most OP weapon in the game, like by getting a season pass, oh, I, I don't know about that, but you know, it's gonna make other people's experience like worse because oh, like, oh they could be like oh i wish i would have got the pass but oh well you know the at least the exclusive weapons and destiny there that you got from like pre-ordering the game and whatnot yeah you just get that gun early you don't actually uh it, it's not something you can't earn in game i mean i wouldn't but, know i never played destiny so another thing i dislike about it though there season passes are giving you less and less like do you remember when season passes used to meant you got like if all you the, the season, dlcs yeah all the dlcs all the dlcs ever yeah like that yeah. was the thing and then they're like well no season pass just gets you the season pass for 2018 or 2016 or whatever you know like, well, but if we have come out with more dlcs we'll come out with another season pass like that happened everyone was like what what is, what is this this is like this is the actual yeah. season you know yeah i, I hear you and it's, and it's like then and they also had the people that were like oh yeah this this you know this will give you this and this dlc but all these dlcs they're they're not for that because those are major dlc it's like no no this is a c they're giving you so much less and less it's ridiculous yeah all right, I'm gonna let you guys cover one more, just because of time. All right. <laughs> so DLC before it comes out, holding a button to interact, goodbye physical releases or microtransactions in single player games. What do you want to hit? Gaming candles. I mean, Gaming. Oh, you want to talk about honorable? Uh, this the honorable mentions thing. <laughs> Gaming yeah, candles. You totally for, yeah, you totally forgot about that. I'm not. I'm not, yeah, I'm not talking candles. I'm not talking about the gaming candles. But why not? But, but why not? <laughs> All right, Curbs. <laughs> Curbs chose a gaming candles. Hey, Curbs. So, what are gaming candles? They're candles that, that smell are like branded for specific games, and mm -hmm. I'm assuming they have specific smells that make you make your house smell like uh, those video games. And this appetizing uh, couple of pictures make you're gonna make your house smell like either a rundown city or a forest fire. So that's amazing, huh? Yeah, it's like he says. Yeah. The, the, the article writer says, and I quote, I just want to know this. Why? Why does my room need to smell like rust, blood, and atomic <laughs> decay, like snow, dragons, and murder, or most confusingly, like sweat, mold, and festering flesh? Why? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 could, 
I could talk about this another time on, uh, on other for other things. But anyway, thanks thanks for choosing gaming, gaming candles. <laughs> I don't think it's a worst gaming trend by any means. I think it's just a weird product that they put out. Totally. I yeah. You just need better. You just need better sense, basically. <laughs> well, well, the 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 the, the big part is. Um, you notice both of these pictures that Skyrim VR and Fallout 4 VR. Um, so one of the things Bill Gates a long time ago, you know, he said we were ta- he was talking about virtual reality. I think this is probably like late 90s, early 2000s. And he said, yeah, virtual reality is is going to hit a wall because uh, virtual reality is going after the eyes and the ears and no one's going after the smell. And then uh, a couple of years ago at Gamescom, uh, they had South Park, the fractured butthole, and uh, they had the nauseous rift, and uh, basically it was just a a nose headset. You know, it was a headset that went right around the Oculus Rift, and it gave you the nauseous rift, which was like just smells of farts and stuff. And they they demoed it out just to kind of mess with people, but that's a thing because part of our you know tapping into all of our senses we're starting to do motor movement now and vr and all that if you can get uh smell into vr if you can actually put on fallout 4 vr flip your wrist up and you have your pep your pit boy and all that and you're you're going through your inventory and and you're looking around the fallen world and you smell what what smells like nuclear holocaust that might add to the effect you know so that's the reason but it's still terrible (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I feel like if it may, I guess, hit a wall. But in general, if you add the sense of smell in there, <clears throat> a lot of the smells you're going to be smelling are going to be really bad because yeah. most games are not in exactly really bad. Have have the best of settings for smells. Like yeah. Fallout Four, you're going to be smelling awful things all the entire time. <laughs> and yeah. it, it, people are gonna think it's gonna be like immersion, but no, it's gonna, just gonna make you want to take the headset off and not play it anymore. Like if it was a meditation app and you were going out into the forest to meditate in some you know awesome looking forest where you can breathe fresh air and all that, and it was like pine and ionized air and all this stuff, it'd be like, oh wow, this is so refreshing. But like we don't play games like that. Or if it was <laughs> there's like not a market. There's not a market for that. You know. Or if it was like a cooking game where you're cooking like the best foods or something like that, and they give you those smells, oh, that would be enjoyable. Yeah. That'd that would be, good, be enjoyable. Dude. But... Even if it was just like a uh, like a cooking game, with, and it was just you know those like Saturn missiles, uh, those box of rockets that you can buy for Fourth of July, and mm-hmm. you light it, and they're like pew pew pew, and it's like a twenty five or fifty on a stack. Like if it was just one of those, and it was like it just did poofs. Of like air fresheners of different foods as like as like oh man I think the steak's done and you like you're playing like Overcooked three and you're like running over to grab the steak because the thing went Poof, you know like oh that'd be so awesome that's a good idea yeah. dude doing the food huh yeah I think that would work in that type of situation or something where you know the smells are actually supposed to be good and that's one of the one of the key factors of the game but it's like in all these other games. I mean, can you imagine a Diablo candle if, Dude. like, the smell of it? <laughs> yeah. That would like, be... Death and demons death. Like, <laughs> what? I know what I'm not buying. Oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly, I mean, right? Yeah, go into that cooking thing again. Give it more of a chance by you can only cook stuff that's vegan. I mean, yeah. have you smelled <laughs> Smells like Madan? spinach. He looks like he would smell horrible. Yeah. I bet, oh, wait, my tofu's ready. Okay. Yeah, tofu. <laughs> it's like, is that... Is that is that tofu? No, no, this no, this yeah. is tempeh. No, no, no it's totally different. All right, no, so this is soy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so Curbs picked gaming candles. All right, what are you thinking, Moral? What do you want to talk about for last one? Microtransactions, goodbye physical releases, hold button interact, or DLC before a game comes out? Uh, loot boxes that technically in microtransactions, but th- that's in single, that's multiplayer games, but um. I think let's go with uh do 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 um this is it. okay goodbye physical releases oh there go you go that. all right cool so goodbye physical releases 
Yeah, um, PC Master Race. That's it. That's <laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, it, yeah, it was, yeah. People be on you know Steam or all those other um, platforms. You know, we could play some pretty much some of the same games you could that you could play on console. Or whatnot. I mean, I think there's some games you could only play on console, not not on PC. I think. I so so I was at, I was at this uh, I was at this department store. It's kind of like Walmart, but not really. It's a regional one or whatever. Um, and I was looking at like the PC boxes, you know, like this was probably a year ago. And I was like, man, like oh wow, like PC games and boxes. Like I wonder what they're stocking, and I wonder how expensive it is, you know, because like Steam sales, you know, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, like they were actually priced right. And I was like like whoa and i'm like checking steam you know next to like civilization whatever and i'm like wow like 9.99 like no joke this is 9.99 so like i flagged down one of the people and i was like hey so what's the deal like you guys are actually like properly pricing your pc games and they had an employee who was huge pc master race nerd who's shopping at steam all the time and he's like oh yeah i i I watch the steam prices and i just price their stuff to that because i know we're not going to sell it if we don't and i was like oh my gosh that's genius man you know, like they paid way more for it, but they know that it's just gonna sit there for six years and collect dust until it becomes clearance bin material. You know, but uh, but yeah, physical releases, man. Like, um, do you guys remember what happened with uh, Destiny Two? Nope. Yeah, what happened with Destiny Two curves? Yeah, you wanna talk about that? No. Yeah. So. Speed? so oh, no. Okay. I'm, I might be able to. Uh, I might be able to okay. actually grab it. Destiny Two was. Did you buy? Did you buy? Did you buy the physical? No. no. Oh, let me tell you about the physical curves. Do you know what was in the physical edition? What was in the physical edition? I wish. I'm looking. I I thought you were just saying Destiny Two because it had such a bad release, and a bad release is gonna tank physical sales even more. But. All right. Sorry for that segue. All right, so for those who can see me, behold, this is a Destiny 2 PC game. On the front, it says, I don't know if I can get it. It says, PC download only, no physical disc. And then you open it's a it up. dark to see it, but I think I can see it. You open it up, and no joke, it is a paper CD that says, here's your code. Go download it. What yeah. the heck? <laughs> like no. this this is gonna be like worth something someday because of how stupid it is. <laughs> it's like, what yeah. kind of sorcery is this? Yeah, I know you we buy a game. I know I know it's gonna have a forty four gig day one patch, okay? But could I not have a disc? You know, like what's the point of and this is them saying like it's pointless to buy this now. Why'd you why'd you buy the box? Very sad. Yeah. <laughs> You're just paying more for the actual box. I know, and you could have gotten it. You know, uh, you didn't have to wait for the box to be mailed to you with the code on it. You could have just bought it, and it would have been downloaded a day early. Like buying the mm-hmm. physical is completely pointless now. It's 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 sad, but anyway. I mean, I like buying the physical for like my mobile things, like my DS and my Switch and whatnot. Like, uh, there was a time where... Oh, reselling. My, yeah, that's a thing, you know? Yeah. For the console side. And then, at least with Nintendo, uh, if you go to Switch, like, let's say you have a DS, you go to Switch your account from the DS to another one, you know, like, if you upgrade or whatever, right? you have to actually do it from the one DS to the other. Yep. And my original 3DS, before I upgraded to the XL, the actual, the one piece of the, the charger charging port in the DS came out so yep. it couldn't charge anymore. So you can't so I transfer. I couldn't do it. Yep. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you don't have your account, you can't just put it on a new DS. You have to call them and any digital games you have, you can't play until they do it themselves. They restore. Right? Yep. I think there are reasons to, and I do en- I do enjoy just having a physical copy for some reason, but there's not really much other reasons. To do it. Yeah, it's just for resale. Yeah. On the console side, you you can resale on on PC. You really can't. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Uh huh. 
All right, cool. I well, think you uh, get like a refund like on CV. I think if you play under a certain amount of hours of the game, I think. Yeah, uh, a certain amount of hours and a certain amount of time, I think. Yeah, yeah time, time since that. purchased and hours played in game, correct? Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, if you guys have you guys have any afterburners, anyone want to say anything before I, I wrap it up? Thanks so much for the uh, for the discussion. It was good. Well, I have a confession to make. Oh God. Did this I don't is know. I don't know. Segment. This Cur Curbs. <laughs> I don't know if this is the place, man. We might want to take this I, offline. I have, a, I, have, I have a confession to make. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, not actually Iman Eight Hundred Eight. Oh my gosh. You don't say. He just told me to tell and say that you were. I was him. All right. Well, thanks for clearing that up. I did it. He Cur paid me like fifty bucks in an alleyway. And Th gave thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for clearing that up, Curbs. Iman Musk. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, Iman Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Iman got renamed, and he wasn't even here for it. And now we're gonna be—he's gonna be like, "Why do you guys keep calling me that?" I'm like, dude, you gotta listen to episode four, man. You'll see. You got—you gotta go with it. You just, you just gotta you just gotta go with the flow, man. Yeah. Awesome. You gotta accept it. All right, Moral. You got anything else before I uh, I wrap it up? Um, that depends. Depends on how much time we have. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Let's go well, with that. <laughs> you got you got like I don't know three minutes. You can do that if you want. Three minutes, huh? Yeah, if you have anything for three minutes. Um, no, I think I'm good. All actually. right, cool, man. I I just have to, um, I have to pee. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> yep i think we're all we're all there right now all right so so yeah. let, let's let's wrap it up uh for the end of the podcast i do uh, a streamer shout out um moral kind of already shouted out his stuff um earlier but uh moral do you mind shouting out one more time what you're doing where you're at and where people can find you yeah yeah sure um you folks can find me on mixer.com slash moral truth um, I stream on Mondays, or I think around like 4 p.m. Pacific time. But um, yeah, I might, sometimes I might stream other days. It depends, you know, if, like, if if time constraints aren't an issue. Gotcha. But I'm not, cannot, yeah, I also can be found on youtube.com slash moral truth. It's the same name. Um, that's where I upload episodes of my podcast and some ASMR videos. Um, I can also be found on Twitter if you want to chat with me on Twitter at Moral Truthy. Just Moral Truth, just add a Y in the end to it, because Moral Truth is taken on Twitter by some guy you know that has his account privated for some reason. I mm. I sent him a request, and you know he never, he just left that pending for some reason. If you PayPal him like five thousand dollars, he might respond. Yeah, I mean, if I could ask for a <laughs> PayPal link, but you no, know, I could just tag him. Hey, let me get, let me get, a, let me send me your PayPal. You know, I could, so I could get your. I name, will, I will but, buy your name. All right, nah, cool. I, I want to do that. Um, but yeah, YouTube, uh, Mixer. Um, I have a website for my podcast, morrispodcast.weebly.com. Um, you can find all my web episodes of the podcast there and other places where you can listen to it, pretty much. Cool, man. All right, thanks so much. So so that's my, my one uh, streamer shout-out, but I also want to shout-out uh, Professor Broman over on Twitch. Uh, he's one of the reasons why... Uh, I think we've been semi-successful so far. Uh, he's got an awesome, awesome podcast. I don't actually get to catch his stream on Twitch much at all, but he is at twitch.tv slash Professor Broman. Um, he, uh, he's got some really good inspirational nuggets um, for any streamers out there who don't listen to his stuff. Um, you can... Uh, <laughs> moral, you're cracking up. Shameless. Um, for anyone who doesn't listen to his stuff, uh, it's it's a lot a lot of good knowledge. Uh, he's th he's throwing everything out there for free to help people understand this. You know what is streaming? What can I do better? Small business stuff. I mean, the guy runs uh, Guardian Con, which you know this year raised two point eight million dollars for St. Jude's, which runs the hospital for a day. Um, like hashtag gaming does good. Like all this stuff. Like he's a huge he's a huge part of that. Um, so I just want to shout him out. If you ever want to want to pick his brain on stuff, uh, you can hit him up on Instagram too, at Professor Broman, and uh, and he he responds to DMs. He makes sure every day that he he responds to every single person who contacts him, which is really really cool. Um, again, totally free to everyone, you know. So 
I, I like to uh, I like to follow his lead on that and kind of keep you know everything that I'm doing free. I'm yeah, not let, let me just go look for him on Twitter. I'm sorry, Instagram actually. Yeah, he, on, his Instagram is good too. Um, he does all kinds of stuff. He also runs Kings Coast Coffee. So if you're looking for good coffee, I've tried a couple of them so far. They're fantastic. I mean, it's fresh roasted coffee. Um, and fresh roasted coffee is far superior than any other coffee you can get in the, in the store. Um, but yeah, they've totally just three or four streamers came together and built this company and they each have their own specific roast and all that. And it's, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's my secondary shout out. I've been wanting to shout him out for this entire time. He's one of the reasons why I'm even doing the podcast. Cause he's like, Hey, you need to do this. You need to re re digest your content and put it other places and you get it moral. You, you totally understand it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, as, as a podcast host myself, yeah. Oh, yeah, and Broman has his own podcast too. So yeah, that's, that's, that's Ask Broman is some of the some of the most insightful stuff. Hour long discussions where he just brings people into Discord and lets them ask him anything about how he walks his dog to what kind of mic he uses to why don't I have any viewers and how come they don't talk to me? You know, cause that's a pretty common question yeah. too. But, but I mean, it's, it's different for everything, you know, and he, he gives you some pretty solid insight on that. Um, really good stuff. Uh, so yeah, th- I think that's where we're going to wrap it up today, guys. Um, thanks so much everyone for tuning in and chat. Uh, thanks so much for the views on YouTube and the downloads so far on anchor. Um, we're going to get it out on, on a little bit more, platforms too i think i'm gonna go after podbean and apple because it looks like uh looks like anchor isn't pushing it over there so i'm gonna do a little bit of manual effort probably this weekend to get the others over there as well um the episode should be live sunday ish uh maybe saturday depends how my day is looking tomorrow i might be able to get some stuff out um but thanks again to uh to curbs iman curbs iman curbs musk and moral truth for hanging out uh you guys are awesome time yeah, yeah, it's a pleasure. I, to, I totally to be appreciate on, it. I, I'd love to have you back for like the ASMR thing, just to kind of have that discussion because uh, this is really interesting. And I'm I'm not gonna get into ASMR beyond that. People who know that acronym know what it is, but it'd be really cool to kind of break that down for some people. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I'll, I'll be down to come on um, next time, and there's some other time in the future to, to um, talk about it. Yeah, most definitely. Sounds good. Because, um, yeah, yeah, some folks you know, may have like a different perspective of what ASMR is, but you know, there's other perspectives. You know, you got um, look into on that, like for sure. Yeah, it's it's very broad, and people do their specific thing, and everyone calls it ASMR, but it's it's a big big onion to peel back. Um, all yeah. right, so yeah, so, it's been around for like quite a long time. I know, right? Yeah. And it, like yeah. all of a sudden, with with you know media 2.0, it's it's actually accessible, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, so thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Um, thanks for the likes, the subscribes, the downloads, the shares, the applause, the everything, all those things <laughs> that you can do to interact with the community. We appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for speaking in chat. Thanks for playing the arcade games. Um, yeah, it's so good. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we're going to terminate the podcast now, and we'll see you next week for episode five. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs> I already killed it, dude. You had your chance, man. (laughs) I I might be able to throw that on there.